manage an argument, opening up a clear advantage in the closing stages. A breath of fresh air over fences is going to stay at the helm of the two mind offices. An argument by a romping 10, 12 late. And a very warm welcome to a new look champ.ie podcast. You can tell Barry Doyle had a winner on the horses last week because he's kind of spent it. Either that or it's his early Christmas money. Anyway, welcome to the glorious new graphics. It hasn't changed the fact that I'm in my kitchen. Barry's in, I don't know where he is, in his house. Uh, Tommy Coyle's in what they call the office. And Ronan Groom is in the intelligence centre. No one has yet decided the smallest room is the best place to take their laptop and talk to us. But surely it is only a matter of time. But a really special welcome to a very special programme tonight because there's some wonderful racing on both sides of the Irish Sea. And we'll hear from a rising star who got one of the thrills of his life uh, just a week ago, namely Dara O'Keefe, who, of course, rode Bob Ollinger while Rachel Blackmore was uh, making merry at Haydock Park uh, back at uh, Goran. He rode Bob Ollinger to his debut win over fences. But anyway, the three wise men are here. Ronan Grew of the Irish Field, Thomas Coyle of Thomas Coyle, and Barry Doyle of no one in particular. And uh, it's their opportunity now to prove exactly how much they know, but lads, a wonderful weekend with the Newbury and Newcastle dominating Saturday and then Group 1s and some wonderful handicaps dominating Sunday at Fairy House in, in County Meath and uh, will it again be the Honeysuckle Show. But we start with the Saturday action and Newbury and the Labrooks Trophy. Uh, stats here, Denman, of course, won it twice, two years apart, that 2009 win. I think it's about the most extraordinary that I've ever seen. His second win in three years. The only horse to win back-to-backs. Somebody called Arkel. So that's what Cloth Gap has to try and emulate when he takes on 20 rivals. Newbury, they watered it. Good to soft. Not expecting any significant rain, unlike a Newcastle, which more in a while. Um, I'm not sure there's a superstar in there, Ronan Grimm. It's a very, very competitive race. Uh, it's definitely a very competitive race. I, I, not, I wouldn't be as pessimistic about there being a superstar. There could be one, Mike, I think. Uh, a lot of unexposed horses, your typical kind of Hennessy, Ladbrokes trophy, even horses there at the top of the market, uh, second season chasers. I think there's a lot of Eclat the Rear fans out there will be hoping that he can get it done. Um, I'm a Fiddler on the Roof uh, fan. I think if he could win off 150, he could be... Uh, could develop into a grade one, one horse this season. And then you have on the ropes, obviously, the, the Woody Mullins kind of taking the same line through the Monster National again. So it's always a fascinating race. Um, Mike, as I said, I like Fiddler on the roof. I just think I just think he's better handicapped when you take into account all the uh, those horses towards the top of the market. He's, he's obviously finished second a lot of times last season, but that's rock-solid form. And I just think what he achieved there, he did a lot more, obviously, than he got the rear did. Um, and on the ropes uh, for all that they might be unexposed and have the potential to improve further. But Fiddler on the roof, they they, they ran up to Carlisle and, and thought he ran really well there to win. He, he jumped really well, stayed on towards the end. I think he needed every single yard of that two and a half mile trip. I think he was winning in spite of the trip. And if you told them before that, that they, all they have to do is pay two pounds for that because that's all he's gone up, two pounds. Uh, and he's got the race fitness on side now. And... There was a 160 horse back in third, so technically he could have gone up a lot more in the weights. Um, so he's only 150, two pounds higher. Um, I think he's well handicapped, has race fitness on side, will love the trip. And they were even talking about running him in the Betfair Chase as well. So th- there's a huge belief behind them. Uh, Brendan Powell and, and, and is going really well for the Tizards so far this season. I thought he should be just about favourite ahead of the two Irish horses, who I obviously respect. Uh, and the one I will have another go, Mike. Um, I'm going to throw it in. I think you can always go for a big price here. And I, I, I just like the Twist and Davies horse there, the Hollow Ginge. He's 33 to 1, but he ran fourth in this race last season. Uh, staying on in a race that, you know, developed up front um, with Clock Cap and I Rice. He, he, he was, came from the back uh, and he ran a really good race in a seasonal debut there at Cheltenham. He was only beaten, uh, beaten ahead, I think, by definite plan. And he's two pounds lower than last year, so I could see him running the big race. Could run into the into the frame with you know nice each way terms, hopefully on Saturday morning. So they're my two against the field, Mike. Of course, we've got the first three in that controversial Sandown Bet three six five Gold Cup where Enrillo was first past the post and did for Kitty's light, and the beneficiary was Potterman, who wasn't even involved. 
So they're rematching. And um, we've also got interesting Tom Scudamore riding cloth cap and David Punch remaster taking his chance with young Fergus Gillard. I mentioned a lot of horses, Tommy. Um, what else should I be mentioning? Yeah, um, I, just going back to Ronan, I, I actually like Fiddler on the Roof as well. It's it's kind of that Carlisle race. Um, the Tizars kind of picked that out. If you remember two years ago, they won it with Lost in Translation. So they, it's a, they obviously pick one of their good novices and, and go there for an intermediate chase and kind of go from there. He, as, as Ronan said, he still looks a bit well handicapped and he chased home Monkfish in Cheltenham as well. Actually, I know he, he was a long way behind him, six and a half lengths or so. But look, it's it, he has proper grade one form in the book. Um, they'll have to beat him. I couldn't see Clock Cap um, backing her up. He's 18 pound higher this time around than last year. Um, I just couldn't see it. And I do agree. Um, the two up at the top of the market, the two Irish horses are very unexposed. They, they don't have much racing done between them. Um, we're, Henry's horse won in Wexford this season. Now, we did get tired. The ground was heavy in Wexford that day. Um, he'll come on for the run. On the ropes, won the Munster National. He runs off £12 higher in this. But he, he's still a young horse and can improve as well. Um, the other two of Willie's horses are very closely matched on the Kerry National run, um, Brahma Bowl and Animix. Animix probably comes a little bit better out in the weights this time with Jack Foley taking five off him. So probably not a whole lot of them. They could be your kind of each way value in this as well. Um, I, I do like Fiddler on the Roof, although I do think it's a very strong hand, the Irish having it, and he will have to go well to, to beat this kind of up and coming chasers in the front two. But um, it looks to be an exciting race. And uh, if a horse did go out and win this well, you wouldn't know. He, he could end up being, as Roman says, a, a grade one horse for the, for the rest of the season. When I hear the word fiddler, for some reason, I keep thinking of Barry Doyle. Um, are you a fiddler on the roof as well? You must have saw videos of the stag party, did you? The hilltop bar, Bella Murphy. Um, we hadn't a fiddle, we had, a, we had, a, we had an accordion. Um, it was interesting, speaking to Daryl Keefe, actually, without rambling on, I got to mention Hilltop Supreme uh, for Belinda and all them in the hilltop. But anyway, um, he did ride that to victory. We're talking about the Hennessy, Mike. Um, yeah. I suppose a couple of good points there. Um, the ones at the top of the market, the two Irish horses coming over, to be fair, they, they, you know, they're very unexposed. How many seven-year-olds uh, have won this race? I don't have the exact stat in front of me, but um, I suppose the, the top, I don't know who's making noise in the background, Ronan, put yourself on mute there, please. I think the housemate is uh, doing, doing the dishes. But uh, yeah, the, the first four in the betting, all seven-year-olds. Um, the two I like in here are actually not... The Irish horses. Um, Enrillo was one I had marked down for this for, for quite a while for Paul Nichols, a seven year old, as I said. Uh, he's rated 140 over hurdles. This lad's a big chaser. Um, I kind of fancied him last year for the Cato Star Novices. Uh, he, he never raised the gallop there whatsoever. Um, has won at Newbury on good to soft. I think this has been the plan for this horse for, for a long, long time. And I think all the focus ha has moved away from him with the two Irish horses coming over. Um, Eclat de Rear could be anything. He's he's one uh, that I spoke about on, on, on the the road to, or sorry, on the on the jump season preview at the start of the year. Uh, he really could be anything. He's carrying a high enough weight here. Uh, wouldn't put it beyond Rachel taking out a, the big race of the weekend again. Um, but I do I do think maybe softer conditions. Um, I think the more rain, the better for him. The one I'll side with um, is in Rillo. Uh, as I said, I think it's been the plan for a long time. He jumps well. Uh, he's the right type of profile for the race. Uh, and I think there's, you know, if, if the two Irish horses weren't coming over, I think he would be he would be a, a, a warm order uh, or a warm fancy for this race. Uh, the other one I'll give a mention to is the machine uh, for Kerry Lee. She's, um, this horse is an interesting horse. Uh, he, you know, he, 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 I fancied him. Uh, he won two on the bounce um, early last season at Utoxeter um, and, and Ascot. Uh, before I suppose maybe slightly disappointed on, on, on soft ground behind Paint the Dream at, at, at Newbury. Um he, he's a real staying chaser. Um and I, I think he's he's quite unexposed. He's only had four runs, uh only eight ru runs in total uh, in, in, in his life. He's one I give a mention to maybe at a bigger price, 14 to one. Um I think the track um and underground conditions won't be a, a bother to him and uh, i think he, he jumps very well uh so if you wanted a bigger price mike i'd i'd, I'd put in but my, my fancy for the race is in riddle 
I thought, I thought Ronan was so <laughs> disgusted with that that he walked off. <laughs> Couldn't believe it. He had enough of it out of here. <laughs> it was a bit of that. I saw Rillo work at uh, Newbury on the Gallup State, and he looked really impressive. And he'll stay all day, and um, he's been primed for the race. And I think he'll go very close. But I'm also think Filler on the Roof's got a major chance to give the Tizard a third win in the race. Now, we move to Newcastle, which is the other part of Saturday. And important news from Newcastle is the fact that they're expecting up to 20 mil, between 10 and 20 mil of rain, before the fighting fifth, the uh, Betfair fighting fifth on a Saturday afternoon. Field of six, headed by last year's winner, uh, Epitant, and uh, gets weight from her rivals um does she win again perhaps this time a bit more um uh, shall we say in ordinary after last year's extraordinary games on with silver street tommy just on saying that as well mike you're saying you're getting all the rain it's a bit madness having the the main races if it is going to get soft that the main race of the day is the last one on the cards it's fairly unusual for something in it's England. totally for television it's tv yeah well, it's uh, do you know like ground Chopped up, I've seen there's 13 runners in a handicap, 12 and a maiden hurdle before it, and then you've got your grey bone horses running then after it. I don't, I know it's for television, but I don't think in Ireland they've nearly put up with that um, over here, especially for their, their group grey bone horses. Um, look, it's it's on paper, there's only the few runners. Um, we all know Epitant, um, look, she done what she done last year. She came up short against the good mare Honeysuckle in the good races. She also got bet in the in the Christmas hurdle at Kempton by Silver Streak. Um, she's a little bit to prove probably this year now. Um, I think you were saying that Nikki in the end of October wasn't that happy with her fitness, Mike Gray. He, he was just coming along. No, you were listening. You were, you were getting, got half the conversation. I was talking about oh, Shishkin. Oh, sorry, sorry. And um, uh, Epitone's been, been flying. She's been target, on, on target for this race. But the interesting thing is, is the four-year-old that takes her on Mummy Ralph for Paul Nichols. Yeah, of look, course, was a great one winner as a as a four-year-old back in at yeah. Aintree. Doesn't get an allowance. So the, the thing to me that's crazy here is Epitone is getting weight from all her rivals. Does he go? Yeah, well, does he go here, lads? Man, Morel, does he? Does he go? I, think I saw him entered in in, in, the, in in the introductory hurdle as well. Ronan, Ronan's coming. He's in declared. There. It's the declarations. Yeah, this is Saturday, so this is Dex. The six runners are the final field. The only one that doesn't yeah. run from the five daily left in is Belfast Banzer, who's been sold. So, um, yeah. Epitant for you, Tommy, in a word. Uh, I, I take her on, actually, um, just because With I think who? she has a, li a little bit to prove. I think uh, Sco Royal, or so Royal um, he, he was impressive enough in, in Huntington, and he has them two races behind his belt, so he's going to be going in there. Fairly fit horse. Um, well, on the rain, though, will he? Probably not, no. And like I know, if you look back, Belfast Banter was third and that you couldn't really see him win the champion hurdle or being mapped in it. But I just think maybe fitness. Obviously, the Nichols horse is very interesting, and like he's been very impressive. I think any race he's won, he's won by seven lengths plus. And um, he's done a very easy capping off with that win in the Grade One hurdle in Aintree. Um, the rest of them, Silver Streak has an odd day that he comes, but he has. Too many bad days to have a good day. So um look, it's probably a three horse race. Um, but maybe if the rain didn't come and just fitness on his side, I might just take a chance of four to one with Soraya. And Mama Rad, of course, um beat uh, Adagio David Pipes at Aintree. And I mean that, that horse run, the mother and father of a good run, uh, in the great with the other day. So that four year old form looks rock solid, Ronan, doesn't it? Yeah, geez, I, I'm I'm mad keen to take on four year olds and open company all the same, Mike. I I just think it's too hard for them, really. I think you need an exceptional one to do it, and I'm not convinced Mon Moral is. Um it's only called Night Nurse when it's a four year old. That's what the sort of game you're gonna have to play. Yeah, yeah, perhaps. Yeah. Um look, yeah, I'm not saying he can't win, he could be very good, but as you said yourself, he's a four year old, he's got to give seven pounds away to Epitant. It's 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 kind of it just seems unfair, doesn't it? It doesn't seem like a fair fight there, you know. Um, for all that, I don't actually think Epitone, um I'm not convinced, like uh, Tom was saying there. I think she, she, she her, her hurdling went to pieces a bit last season. Uh, I think they made reference to that as her um, 
Uh, Nikki's had something done to her back. He thinks that might have been wrong with her. So he's still got to take a look at her and make sure she is back to normal. But for me, the handicapper says she's um, come down eight pounds. And she's got a bit to prove now, I'd say. And uh, for me, So Royal is rock solid here. I think you get four to one. And um, for race fit, he's 100. And he's absolutely rock solid at 158. He's shown that already on two stars this season. This is his type of track. People look at this race last season and they see Epiton just flying by him late on. But that, that race, that, that doesn't tell half the story, that race. Everyone remembers... Um, wasn't it not so sleepy? He went to the first and then the, uh, ran off loose and then took out Silver Streak in the second, devoid the race of all the pace. And still, so Royal had to make his own pace, which is exactly what he doesn't want to do. Obviously, those two horses, not so sleepy and Silver Streak, are back. Something mad can't happen twice. So I'd imagine they'll make the running between them, one of them at least. And so Royal will get a much better trip this time. Four to one, and it, like you can back him at four to one, but even if you wanted to be a bit more conservative, I'd I'd back him in a match. You probably get a good match bet with against Mon Moral, and um, that would do me. He's he's a bigger price now. I can see than Mon Moral. I, I can't have that at all. You'd probably get odds against in a match if you wanted to be a bit more conservative. And um, that'd be the way I'd go. But um, yeah, I'd be a big fan of So Royal here. Yeah, you do one big caveat for So Royal. Twenty mil of rain if that if that falls for me. Maybe, that yeah, could be maybe. The, a, a critical factor in this. So, Barry, on with that information. Where's your shilling here? Full house score aisle. Um, right, we can move on then. Uh, <laughs> That's all you've got to say. Um, so raw for everybody. I just think the rain might be, uh, might suffer, might scupper his chances. But just on, but just on him, Mike, you know, I, th I think the last time uh, on the show before Wincant and, um, you know, we, we were all mad keen to take him on. Like, I mean, what what a horse he's been. Like, with Daryl Jacob on, on, on the show last year, and you could just tell when we mentioned Score Ryan. Um, and a lot of just, people at Win Canton wanting to take him on with Goshen, weren't they? We all saw what happened to Goshen last weekend. But he had he said he said he said forty runs um, over rules in, in his life. It's incredible. Like you know, how, and and you know. You mentioned the ground factor, uh, good ground, but but just uh, I echo everything the lads are saying here. Um, Mon Morale, he will want rain, um, and you know, he was very good last season, but what, what did he beat? Um, you know, he has both uh, the first and second favorite in the market have it all to prove whether Appetant is, is the same animal. Um, she's come down as run and said in the rate, and she's odds on here. Score Royal has had the run, um, and, and I would echo everything the lads are saying. I think Score Royal is going to be on the premises, and at four to one, um, I think he's a bet at that. See, Ronan's groom, Ronan's butler's just arrived to make the tea for him. Mm -hmm. Uh, we'll let him do that because we it's time just to take a pause after Saturday because obviously Sunday is a huge day in Ireland with Fairy House. Day two of the Bow One Racing Festival, three grade ones and a huge handicap as well. And uh, one man who's had a good week is one of the rising stars, Dara O'Keefe, heads to Ferry House very much with a spring in his step, particularly after riding Bob Ollinger to win at Goran last weekend while the blessed Miss Blackmore was on manoeuvres in northwest England. So let's hear in our special guest on champ.ie. From Dara talking to Barry and looking forward to Fairy House. So delighted to be joined on the Champlain podcast, episode number five. I can't believe it already, but joined by Dara O'Keefe, who is leading the Irish uh, National Hunt Jockeys uh, Championship. Dara, it's hard to it's hard to believe we're, we're I suppose on episode number five of the Champlain podcast, but you're sitting pretty at the top of the the leaderboard. Yeah, look, um, it's it's great. Um, you know, as I said, what we were we're after a great season so far. Um, plenty plenty of winners and uh, um, you know, gotten the chances on a on a on you know a few nice horses and things like that. And and uh, you know, no, as I said, we're 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 going great at the minute. And and uh, you know, long may continue now. Touchwood stay injury free and everything. Absolutely, Dara and. Uh, you're a busy man, I suppose, you know, as well as leading the, uh, or sitting at the top of the table, uh, Dara, you're, you're, I suppose, riding for Henry, Mouse Morris, Gavin Cromwell. Uh, you're a busy man. How, how do you split up your time? What, do, what does your, your week entail? 
yeah, look, um, I kind of juggle it, uh, I kind of get it to suit, I suppose, where racing is done and things. Um, but as the the names you mentioned there, you know, they've been very good to me, and you know, I'd be uh, I'd be in in the Bulgers, uh, Gavin Cromwell's and and uh, Henry's and Martin Razzles, and um, you know, I tried to you know do a bit of schooling as well for Tom Gibney, who's been very good to me, and uh, you know, as I said, we tried to. You know, if I'm if I'm going to them in the mornings and there was no race, then you know I might ride work or school for the, someone else in the afternoons. You know, so I uh, try to do as much as you can for everybody, and and uh, you know it definitely helps out in getting, I suppose, more rides and opportunities. Yeah, we we'll come on to some of the horses later on. Obviously, you having a bit of uh, having a bit of luck with Henry. How many how many mornings would you be uh, in County Waterford? Um, I'd definitely be there one day a week anyway. Um. And some other times they might meet him in the Cora to Gallop or somewhere else, uh, you know. So, uh, no, I def- definitely, I definitely be in Henry's. I tried to go there once a week, and and uh, as you said, he's been he's been very good to me. Absolutely, and um, I, I said to Thomas Coyle, uh, who's who'll be on the show uh, tonight, I said to Thomas that you were coming on. He said when you won your first Grade One last year, which we'll also speak of it at Blue Tard. Uh, he said a baby faced Daryl O'Keefe as a seven pound claimer. He didn't hear you. He said he didn't hear you dedicating the win to him. <laughs> uh, no, as you said, it's it's. Uh... Yeah, I remember. I remember riding for Tom, for Tom uh, when I was cla- when I was claiming. Uh, I think my first spin from was in Down Patrick one day, and uh, you know, as I said, no, it's, it's great, and and um, you know, obviously, you you uh, it's it's great to get associated with big trainers and stuff like that. But but uh, you know, it's it's um, it's great to be riding for trainers. You know, small trainers as well. that kind of you know wouldn't have the 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 large number of horses, but but. Uh, you know, in, fa- in fairness, um, they'd still look after you and stuff like that, and and uh, you know, you still appreciate the rides from them, and and uh, you know, as you said, there's been a, a large variety of, tra- of trainers, you know, that have been brilliant to me since uh since I started riding, and even when I lost the claim, I went to be quiet for a while, but you know, they all they all uh, kept 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 giving me support, which was great, you know. Yeah, and I suppose Darren, looking forward to Fairy House this weekend, at the Drinmore. Uh, novices chase always one of the, the the big races of course um at the fairy house uh, winter festival uh gabby nacko a horse who um went to cheltenham last year and was fancied over hurdles you rode him twice over fences um do you like him dara yeah sure like um you know i suppose he was uh he went to, as you said he went to cheltenham he was favored for the martin pipe and uh um and he came down early in the race, but uh, if you look at his form before that, um, he was he was third to Bob Ollinger in the the Lawlers and A's hurdle last year. He wasn't beaten overly flat, and um, you know he had a couple of other very good runs over hurdles, and um, you know he was uh he had a very good run. His first beginners chase this year in Galway. Um, Gavin said to me that day that he'd improve plenty fitness wise, and and uh. You know, he, he, he just got a bit tired late on, but uh, you know, he, he couldn't have been um but more impressive in his next start, I suppose, in Fairy House. Um you know, it was a really hot beginner's chase that day and uh he was very good and um you know we're we're hoping on Sunday, you know, that um that I suppose he's had two runs over fences and hopefully that should stand him, you know. Absolutely, and I suppose strengths wise, what would you say is his biggest strength from you, from a man? I suppose that you've sat on his back a couple of times now, Daryl. What would you say is his biggest strength? Um, I thought his jumping was very good the last day. Um, you know, and he seems to travel well as well. You know, he's a very uncomplicated horse. Um, but you would have had to have been happy with his jumping the last day around Fairy House, and uh, you know, you never like to say a horse is a really, a really good jumper because you know you, you they're, they're always prone to mistakes I suppose but uh, no touch wood he's jumping I thought was very good the last day and um, you know as I said hopefully he, he can uh, he can put in a good clear round on Sunday and uh, you know I suppose you'll be you'll be hoping to think that he, he should be in the ticket tick of things at the end as well hopefully yeah, it looks a competitive race, of course, with lifetime ambition. Who, who won up the north and 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 Beacon Edge, who'd probably expected to come on come, come on from that run. Uh, just speaking about Gabby Nacko, though, um, 
you know, when the taps were turned, he, he wasn't short of boot the last day, but do you think he could maybe step up and trip? Is he is he is he the type of horse that could potentially go up and trip as, as the season goes on? Yeah, I'd i I'd, I'd imagine so. And I'd say I'd say um you know, like even the last day, I suppose, we, we, you know, we, we were kind of saying maybe the trip was a bit in the sharp side and, and uh, but it was his jumping that was very good the last day, you know, over that trip. And, uh, you know, hopefully sometimes you get away with that, you know, you know, coming back and or, you know, being at a shorter trip of ideal. But if you can jump well, it's a, it's always a big plus. And, um, you know, definitely I wouldn't I wouldn't uh, rule out him stepping up and trip uh you know, during the season, or or, or or we'll see how he gets on on Sunday. But um, you know, as you said, um, he he's jumping was was slick, very slick the last day. So uh, you know, I'm sure the connections wanted to, uh, you know, while he was in the dream, or wanted to, to wanted him to take his chance on it. You know. Yeah, I suppose it could be a, a good day for for Gavin Cromwell, of course, with with my mate Mozzie, of course, on, on the same card. Um. I, I suppose we, we, we mentioned Gabby Nacko, a horse that, that I suppose ran in the same race uh, as Gabby Nacko in, in Galway, um, was a horse you've come out with one on since. We're going to speak about some of the Rob Core horses here, but she, she's a mare that uh, improved so much for, for her first run uh, over hers. You know who I'm talking about, um, Dara Magic Days, uh, one for Henry de Bromhead. She, she was mighty impressive in Cork. She was, and uh, her jumping was. Um... Like she, her jump on that day in Cork on, on the ground and everything was 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 very good. Um, you know it's uh, I mean really really good. Um, like two miles that day and the ground was the ground was kind of like it was dead and everything. But um, she kind of galloped her the rivals into submission kind of thing. Like and and you know they weren't they weren't bad mares. Like the, you know like the the second and third like um Stacey Gold of Mick Winters is a very good mare. Um. You know, and the and the second is as well. You know that 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 is that is good form, and you know I think she won by twenty five lengths in the day. But uh, her jumping was really really good, and and um you know she'll she'll have um, have another have another run now and 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 see uh, in an obvious chase somewhere. But uh you know you'd like you'd like to think that um that you know maybe two two miles and and uh you know she she likes getting on with things. So um obviously Henry won the. The article would put the kettle on as well, you know. So maybe you would know that they might go that route, or, or you know, obviously there is the mayor's chase as well. So um, I, you know, we'll we'll let that up the connections, but um, you know, she's she's a very good mayor. I have to come on to this or sooner rather than later. It's probably the one that everyone wants to to know your thoughts on. Bob Ollinger, Gorham Park last weekend, chasing debut. Um, what sort of a feel did he give you? Um, actually, look, it was probably uh. It was as good as feeling. I probably got the race horse off a horse anyway. You know, um, I thought he was very good. Uh, I thought his jumping was was good. You know, like Gorham Park, the ground wasn't bad, and you know we didn't go overly fast. And had a bit of a sprint in over the last three fences. You know, and you know the fences and going um, up to the straight the last time to be you know you know as it is, but like. As I said, we, we, we didn't go overly quick and, and it kind of turned into a sprint. And, um, you know, I thought he picked up really well. Um, I thought he jumped very well the whole way around. Um, a little bit of a peck at the back of the third last. But, you know, and saying that, like, it wasn't really a mistake. And, and um, you know, I'd say he, he's definitely won. You know, he was the high-class novice hurdler. And uh, you'd like to think he can, you know, maybe reach even even, even more over fences, you know. Yeah, a point, a point to point winner, of course, um, before every ran, I suppose, on the track there uh, um, and reached a level of 159. So, really high rating. Uh, we all know his ability. But you mentioned his jumping. Um, did you feel he was making lengths of his fences, or do you feel as though he, he can improve as the season goes on? Um, would you, would you like I, to see like him? Um, I'd look at you. you would, it's his first run over fences. You know, he was obviously going to improve. Um, and you know, in a better race, he'll he'll probably be better as well. Um, you know, like uh, as you said, the, the day in Gorn, like it was, it was more so. You know, all all everyone wanted was to see him do was put in a clear round, and and uh, you know, I don't think he could have. You know, he he like it was probably like it was a really really good beginner's chase. You know, like the second horses is after winning grade ones and everything, and you know, um. 
as you said, it was uh, it was it was a real it was a really good beginner's chase, and and uh, I thought yeah he couldn't have been any more impressive than he was in the day with the race with the way the race was ran, you know. So um, as I said, everyone was delighted to see him just put in a clear round, and and uh, I thought you know he he'd plenty left um finishing and. Uh, you know, as you said, he'll definitely improve from, you know, fitness wise and probably, you know, jumping and everything will have to come on, you know, after having that start. And, uh, you know, hopefully he, he reached he reach the highs everyone expects him to do, you know. Yeah, uh, fair play, Darren. It was, it was great to be part of uh, of this horse's journey this season. Um, you know, um, everyone knows, I suppose, the ability he has. So um, must have been a great experience for him. But sticking with Rob Core, uh, sticking with, I suppose, your relationship there. Uh, sticking with chasers, what I wanted to ask you about because I thought he jumped particularly well on his first start over fences, and he's come out with one since. Um, and he's a horse I was always looking forward to seeing over fences. Mouse Morris's French Dynamite. Yeah, um, I know French French Dynamite. Um, as you said, he had he had a run around um, Cork. Uh, you know, he's he's first first run over fences, and. Uh, you know, again, the ground was 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 heavy that day, and um, you know, the, the main thing was to get get in a good clear round of jumping, and uh, he was going to improve for the run, and and um, you know, in fair in fairness, he did. He he just got a bit tired turning in, and and um, you know, after after that, then obviously he went to Punches Town, um, nicer ground, and and uh, he was really impressive. He put in a good display of jumping. Yeah, and for such a big horse, rated 150, so he's reached quite a good level of hurdles. How far do you think he could go? Um, that's what I suppose. Like as you said, he was a 150 rated hurdler, and um, like you would nearly like you'd like to think that maybe you know fences might bring more improvement in him. Like he probably, you know, he he was he was this kind of more of a staying hurdler. You know, last year and and uh, he like he ran in all them kind of staying races. So um, you know, again, you'd like to think that uh, you know, he he's going to improve over fences and um, you know, if he does, you, like you, you, it's it's hard to know what where where you see him going. But but uh, you know, hopefully, as I said, he he can be he can be competitive in all in all in grade, maybe stay in chase or something. You know. Yeah, absolutely. Last se- last season, Dara, um. Two victories that you won't forget, I suppose. Your first grade one, obviously, on a Prue Tard. Uh, Chatham Street Lad, of course, in the Caspian Caviar Gold Cup, which was, as I said to you earlier, nearly took the roof off the house when uh, this thing came down the hill on, on the bridle. Uh, two different experiences, I'm sure, but... Yeah, it was that. Hello? Yeah. All right. Sorry, yeah, t- I had a little problem up there, no, you're all right, Dara. I, I said two different experiences. Um, one certainly that, that you remember for for quite a while. Yes, uh, two two of them were really good. Um, you know, it was great in Cheltenham uh, for Mick Winters. Um, you know, he's only over the road for me, and um, you know, he he's a he's a very shrewd trainer, and um, you know, it was great. Um, uh, Chatham Street Lad was was my first winner at. Say Cheltenham, like, and uh, that was a great experience. Um, was there any celebrations really that night, Dara? Uh, I'd say there were well, I was, I was getting a flight home, but I, I'm sure that I think the owners stayed over that night and stuff. So, um, <laughs> and uh, I looked, it was kind of, it was, it was in the middle of the kind of you know, the pandemic as well and everything. So, it was, it was, um, you know, it was obviously hard and owners were kind of only kind of getting back to the race course at that stage over in England. So, um, I, you know, it was, it was tough, but uh, it was a great experience, a great day. And, uh, you know, you wouldn't, you, you, there, there are days that uh, make the bad days worth it, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And that blue tired, of course, as well. He's, he's, he's a horse there and that, I suppose, when, when we saw him, he was having his first run, it, to, to my knowledge, over three miles when you rode him in the Savills. But, um, give us your thoughts on, on him as well last weekend in the bet fair and um, the race kind of fell apart a bit but he looks like he's after improving again yes like I suppose everyone uh, few, I heard a few people saying that oh, the race fell apart and that but um, visually I thought he was just uh, I thought he was I thought everything was just uh, class about him I thought um, the way he travels um, you know the way he jumps um, I thought everything like um 
I think going out the last time you could say that he was going to win the race. You know, he was just um he looked to have everything under control and um you know I, again like he he couldn't have been any more impressive and he can only beat what was there on the day and uh, probably a few of them did underperform and stuff like that. But uh, I think that um it would have taken a. I, I'm not. I'm not sure if anything would have beat them on the day last weekend. He seemed to just everything went right, and it was just on song. So he was, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And there was a lot of talk going into the race there about, I suppose, his record first time up. Do you feel maybe he was more forward this year, or is that just a bit? Um, actually, I suppose it's 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 it's, it's hard to know really. Um, like he, he always kind of maybe the last couple of seasons I think he started off in the far three didn't he over two miles maybe you know so maybe that was it or something but um you know again like uh he, like he obviously since he stepped up to three miles it seems to have brought out more improvement in him and, and stuff but uh you know I think um everyone in the yard was saying that he he was working really well and stuff and and um you know they were hopeful of a of a big run from him you know. Mm, now I could ask you about loads of different horses. I suppose one of my favourites, and we've just mentioned them already. But I suppose I want to ask you what you think about the horse and what type of a horse do you think he is? We've had Mick on a couple of times, but Chatham Street Lad, talk to me about him. Yeah, Chatham Street Lad. Like he's, um, he's 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 uh, like he he ran a really good race. I thought in maybe in Haydock, um, you know, and he he's ran well at Cheltenham and. You know, obviously winning the Casper Gold Cup was was a great result and stuff. But you know, he's 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 a very good horse, and and uh, you know, it's um it's hard to know what what uh you know with with, with all these good staying chasers now. You know, like what what where to go next with him. But um, I think Mick was saying maybe he got a bit of a cut, so he he might be he might be back till after Christmas. But um, ah, you know, he's been a great horse for the owners and a great horse for Mick and. You know, a great horse myself as well. You know, he uh, he he was kind of my first real big winner. You know, as you could say, really to be honest. And and uh, you know, again, um, he's a very shrewd man training him, Mick Winters, and uh, they've done a great job. And you know, I'd like to see him win another big prize with him somewhere along the lines. Yeah, uh, another horse that Dara I wanted to ask you about. Just we, we mentioned Rob Core. You're obviously uh, down Henry's quite a bit. Just wanted to ask your opinion. I'm not sure if you've sat on the horse at home, but a lot of people are talking about this journey with me, who came a, a similar route to, um, I suppose, winning the bumper in Golden Park. And we had Henry on the show. Give us your thoughts on journey with me. Um, how exciting is he in your view? Yes, he looks. He looks very exciting. Um, uh, you know, again, he 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 was really impressed with his bumpers and stuff, and and that you know, and um. Again, I suppose like you, you, everyone's looking forward to seeing him getting out now yeah. and and and, see, and seeing what he can do. You know. Yeah, yeah ab absolutely. Um, I suppose before we finish up, Dara, and, and as I say, um, I, I wish you the best in, in holding on to uh, the lead in the in, in the jockeys championship. Um, and it's great to have you on the show. But before we, I suppose, kind of finish up, um, for the rest of the season, maybe a horse that we may not have mentioned or. Uh, might be going sl slightly under the radar, a horse that you're looking forward to, uh, or what your horse to kind of follow outside of the ones that we've mentioned uh, between now and uh, the rest of, of the National Hunt season, what would it be? Um, I was just, I suppose it's to, to, to hard, to, to hard to single out a horse, you know, you know yourself how, how um, you know, how, how hard it is to, to get him to the track and everything, but uh, one that probably that's probably that that I thought ran really well in in um in Cork against Magic Days was Mick Winters' mare Sassy Gold. Um, I think when she steps up and tripped, I think she could you know um, I think she she could be one that could do, that could have a have a have a nice shoot through over fence. And I thought she ran really well for long ways that day in, in Cork against Magic Days. Um, I think she'd step up and trip. Um, and I think that uh she could be one that that could um. That they could have a bit of fun with with a bit of luck, you know. Say it's cool. I, I actually won a, a um a grade three novice hurdle on her in in Cork uh, last year. So um, you know she's a she's a she's a one thirty three rated hurdler. Uh, I think she, that's her mark. And and uh, you know as I say she 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 could reach higher over fences with a bit of luck. Well, that's Dara talking about Sunday. Just one last quick um skip round. Anybody got anything else to say about Saturday's racing? 
Yeah, I'll, I'll pop in uh, just the fairy house. There's a nice grade B handicap chase there. Um, it's it's probably not as good a renewal as it as it usually is. Um, and I, I just thought Gordon Elliott's Buddy Rich uh, stood out here. I don't think he has an exceptional form, but he has good form on good ground. And it's going to be good, good yielding. And fairy house was the latest ground today. So um, I think a number of his rivals might need it a bit softer. And Buddy Rich is race fit, and he's got uh, beat Bad Adam nicely last day at Navin, and has some nice form with the likes of Third Time Lucky, a couple of other nice novices like Blue, Blueberry and uh, Dancing on My Own. Uh, it's pretty smart novice improving, and I think he's five to one. They've priced this race up already, so um, yeah, I've had a, have a, have had a little go on, on him today when we had declarations. Buddy Rich in the twelve thirty of Ferrius. Buddy Rich named after Ronan Groom. Anything from you, Tom? Yeah, I have two just to mention in Fairy House on Saturday. Um, Eddie, my old boss, Eddie Colley, runs one in the ladies' handicap. Um, nobody home. He ran well in a graded handicap two weeks ago in Punchestown. Um, the race Alpha Mix was just beaten in by fully charged. He just got tap for toe turning in, It was, and he stayed on well from the back of the last. That was two mile three. I actually brought the horse for Eddie because he was in Cork. And um, just talking to JJ after it, he just got tapped for toe turning in, but stayed on well again. He's up two furlongs. He's got the assistance of Susie Doyle, who's leading um, leading lady rider in the point of points this year. So she's good value for seven. She's three winners out of six rides in the point of points. So she knows what she's doing coming from being a daughter of Pats. Um, she'd be well schooled. So um, I think he'll run well for Eddie. Um, Eddie kind of targets Fairy House, as we all know, for a handicap as well. So... Um, I'd expect him to be on his game there on Saturday. And just um, not really a tip, but a horse just to look out for for the year. Um, Enjoy Dallin of Kieran Murphy's is back on the go in the two and a half mile handicap. Obviously, he's a lot lower rated. I think he's £30 lower, but um, Connor Orr rides for me. He was here this morning. He rode the horse uh, that was fourth in Tireless for me today. And um, the long term plan is the Ancient Grand National. And he's just a horse to keep an eye on through the year. Um, to progress and he was third in the Irish National last year and will stay and jumps like a book so for longer down the line um, for an international tilt in April so he's just asked to look out for and see how he progresses. In the words of the Gardaí, acting on information received. Uh, let's proceed in a westerly direction to Barry. Anything for you to add about Saturday or shall we move on to Sunday? Yeah, no, uh, there is something for me to add, Mike. Of course, there's always something for me to add. 150 at Newbury, um, the handicap hurdle over two miles and, and, and four furlongs. Um, I don't think Glory and Fortune is done with uh, over, over hurdles. Won, won the Welsh champion hurdle, um, but ran an absolute cracker, I felt, in a really competitive Greatwood. Um, on ground... Yeah, look, he's one on good ground, but I think I think I'm, I think a bit of juice isn't going to do this horse any harm uh, in, in the surface. Um, he's stepping up and trip. Um, you know, he's only 141, so um, you know he wasn't absolutely crucified for his win. Uh, the second at at um, the second in the Welsh Champion hurdle, the form has worked out well. So um, it, it, it was in the Great Wood. Uh, he's a good price in this, by the way, at Newbury. So he's eight to one in the Great Wood hurdle. He was given a I suppose a uh, he was given a, a strange sort of a ride. He was he was ridden on the outside. Then he then he was taken back in. He made a mistake, a crucial mistake, two out. But I think the form of the Great One is going to work out well. And um, there's a couple in there: Daggio, No Ordinary Joe, uh, who finished um, I suppose second and third in, in the race. I think are progressive horses. Um, but I, I I think he's one maybe at New, at uh, Newbury. Um, stepping up and trip. He's good each way value. I think. At eight to one, you can get eight to one for uh, Glory and Fortune, Stan Shepherd, and Tom Lacey. Anyway, uh, I'll throw one in as well. Then, in that case, the Peter O'Sullivan Memorial, obviously a very special race, and as is usual, the horses owned by JP will carry Sir, Pete, Sir Peter's colours. Um, but I think the Hobbs horse Kaluki might be good each way value with uh, Tom O'Brien up. He'll like the race particularly. Um, because it's going to be run at a fast pace. So we move on then to Fairy House on Sunday. And what we'll do to make it easier for everybody um, is that we will go through the principal races. It makes sound a bit odd. We're going to go through them in race card order to make it easier for people to follow, I think. So we start then with the 105, which is the barwanracing.com Royal Bond. Let's start with that. Two-mile novice hurdle. 
we don't have the final declarations. But the nice thing is, this doesn't look necessarily like penalty kick Mullins versus Gordon Elliott. You've got my mate Mozzie for Gavin, for Gavin Cromwell. Uh, you've also got Utrecht for Joseph O'Brien. And how nice to see Impervious uh, and Colin the Brave in Murphy. Another one, of course, Colin actually, he spent a few months, didn't he, as a, as a stipendary steward at one stage, so poacher turned gamekeeper. Um, Roman, have first innings on this. Very interesting contest. Yeah, very interesting, Mike. Uh, I think we'll be all the more informed about this division when this is this race is run. Uh, it's good that you mentioned Impervious. I, I, I like her. She's uh, And Colin Murphy as well coming back. I uh, had Colin for the big interview a couple of weeks ago in the Irish field and it just seems like he has a much better business plan together himself. Um, and the owner of this horse, whose name escapes me at the moment, uh, Paul McKeown. Um, and this is their first kind of good horse on uh, that they've kind of come across since Colm's gone back training. So obviously he's a well-capable trainer. He's got 20 grade ones. Uh, and this could be a nice mare for him. Um, she did it nicely up at Darren Royal. She obviously gets the weight here. Uh, mayors have a decent enough record on this. I think Early Beach may, might have been the last one to win it. Um, and look, the the two the two at the top of the market were were nice winners last time out. Mighty Potter uh, did it nicely up and down Royal, uh, probably not um, as nice as the win margin suggests because his uh, stablemate fell at the last or the second last that day, uh, and it wasn't much of a race now. And my mate Mozzie obviously has a lot stronger form. He was uh, he won a great three at Navan, uh, recorded a very good time. Uh, so I think he's probably deserves to be favourite over Mighty Potter. And the one I will be looking to if when we do get declarations, because obviously we're dealing with uh, entries at this stage, but Emmett Mullins has uh, a horse called Crowns Major. He's got quite a similar profile to the like, to Cape Gentleman that Emmett had last year. Coming off the flat, uh, won a big flat handicap at, at Galway there of a mile and a half. Uh, so he'd have no problem with the quick ground. And he did it nicely at Cork as well. He he really picked up nicely towards the end of that race on soft ground, which which may not have suited. Maybe it did, but uh, he's another one of these Japanese bred horses that that Emmett's come across. Um, and he could be nice. Yeah, he won seven lengths at Cork. Uh, it wasn't the worst maiden hurdle in the world, and he recorded a very good time in the process as well. So I'd be looking out for him. He's he's a double figure price at the moment, but I wait for declarations just to see if he does get declared and uh, assess the race then. I think the name Emmett Mullins will be uh, on this programme again a little bit later on before we're finished. Um, Mr Coyle, if you could train one of these, which one would you want to train? I take... Um, sorry, I had not um, I take my mate Mozzie. Um, I just think he, like, he was very impressive in this Punchstown bumper last year and his jumping has been so slick. Um, and the one thing that I do think it'll help him this weekend is he, all his runs have been on good ground um, Muddy Potter's two runs have been on softer ground um, like my mate Muzzy he, he, he's that quick he, I, he could go back to the flat for a mile and a half maiden and things like that and I think he actually did didn't he run I think I think he did he get beat around Ballon Road or something actually when I think about it during the summer maybe it wasn't him maybe it's another horse of Gavin's and things. put it on yeah sorry no it's not, not coming um, to me in a second yeah, um, I like him. Um, he looks uncomplicated as well. To win his maiden, he jumped off in front, jumped like a buck. Um, if you could get a lead, all the better in this. But I just think on the faster ground, he's probably the safer bet. Um, I do like the mare impervious. She's done nothing wrong, three from three. Um, just shows the exploits of Colin Murphy as a trainer again. Um, Crown's major, as he said, is no mug. He's rated 97 with flash, which is up to list of class, if not thing if not better um and gordon's tree stripe life um fourth in the Cheltenham bumper um you know it's good solid form he done it workman like in fairy house you'd imagine he'd improve for that again but uh just ground maybe again um that, that'd be the major worry for me for him as well for gordon's too where gavin's we've got improving on good ground i'd be taking six to four on him before he'd be taking mighty power at seven to four anyway um, it's a good race. We learn a lot more of where our novices are, but um, I'll stick with Gavin's. Barry, it's a good race, isn't it? I think the top two in the market. I wouldn't be looking much further, uh, to be honest, Mike. It, um, lots of different horses kind of mentioned there, but um, he's kind of a horse, my my, my mate Mozzie, isn't he? That's starting to capture the imagination of of of, of the Irish uh, public. Uh, he's 
obviously will handle the ground, jumps very well. Um, came from Mags Mullins this time, one point to point. Um, one point. Yeah, yeah well, um, by born to see, handles good ground and one point to point. I think he was came kind of well regarded, so um, he's done absolutely nothing wrong. Um, you'd imagine Fairy House will suit him. Um, so I, I can see why he's favourite, but I, I just love this mighty Potter. I love the profile of him. I'm after backing him, anti-post, um, Ronan will be aware. On Monday night show, um, I have him backed at a bigger sort of prices for the Supreme. I think this lad's, this lad's well regarded. He's pacey. Um, he, he's loads of class. Just look at the way he travels through his races. I get what Roland's saying about, about the race in the north. Um you know, this was a stable mate, they'd come down. So, um, the, the and first enjoy- was second to him as well, it was only four today. I know he'd better 25 lengths, whatever. But it was a bad race, on, yeah. Yeah, she was on the fourth and furthest today. Like, and- yeah, I think you, you mentioned about Gordon lads, like his record in this race as well. You know, he's won, he's won three of the last five as well. I think it was at Mingley Can, M. by Allen. Um, the other one now is after escaping me, but he's won, won three of the last f- five in this. Um, um, and I think, I think if he goes and wins this, he's gonna definitely half in price for a supreme novice's hurdle. Um, I, I liked what I saw um, on both starts. Uh, I think this lad, lad is classy, and, and I'm, I'm majorly looking forward. I'm going down on Sunday uh, to Fairy House, so he's the horse I'm most looking forward to seeing at Fairy House on Sunday. I know the best thing with this podcast is you can see him, so you know to look out for at Fairy House on Sunday. So. If, you're, if he owes you money, you're going to have a great opportunity to see Mr. Doyle in the flesh on Sunday. Well, I'm Nick you know, Davis. Of you know, know, you know, course, yeah, 24 yeah. rivals at Pudgy You know, to stay away from him. The, spreading well, the, the field. Well, run about you're this. You're worse than that racing blogger. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> this, uh, just, think just about just what we're going to do to Barry. Let's move on. Just on we'll this. Here, um, to try and, uh, yes, entertain the public, but also inform them and hopefully find them a winner or seven uh, because the next one that comes up is Rinmore. grade one novice chase again waiting for the final decks a dozen in this including gabby Nacco for gavin cromwell and also cape gentleman for said emmett mullins what fascinates me is how few of the willie mullins novice chasers we've seen and he's only got one amongst the final 12 but is this a case of you know how significant was Beacon Edge's late withdrawal last week? How strong a jig in stand? There are so many questions we want answers. Um, who wants to go first on this, Ronan? Yeah, you make a you make a good point, Mike, um, on on Willie's runners because just just none of them out yet. Like the, the, his only possible runner here is Blueberry, who's still a summer horse. He'd still be part of Willie's kind of summer brigade, and maybe maybe we are being a bit unfair this week to um, to Nikki. Uh, when you consider Willie hasn't he hasn't uh, got many of his ready yet at all, but uh, still waiting for the ground to, to get a bit softer. But I think uh, for all that the ground is quick and that is a bit of a worry at this time of year. I still think this race could end up very nice. Uh, a lifetime ambition. I loved him at uh, Darren Royal. He jumped really, really well amid very, very positive uh, stable reports. Uh, Kay Harrington made a very good point about him and said she loved him and. Did everything right at home and, and he proved that on the course uh obviously that was very good for me big big edge there and vanillier who obviously won since won a grade two uh open trip at punchestown uh so that's he probably deserves to be favorite gabby nacko was a, a big talky horse from last season uh did it nicely at fairy house uh, on the inside course last time and uh he was second on his first start at uh, galway which is okay for him as well the third in that race magic days has come out and won well since um yeah, Beacon Edge is is a is a horse I like. I've always liked. Um, I know No Mead's always been a huge fan of him. Did manage to get the Grade One over hurdles. We did a lot of very good runs. I wouldn't rule him out getting a lot closer to lifetime ambition now with the the benefit of that run. Um, possibly he might be a better horse over further. But he was a very very classy hurdler, and on a seasonal debut, maybe lifetime ambition was just too sharp for him. Um, up over at the two tree at uh, at Down Royal. I wouldn't have him so far away in the betting as he is now. I can see Life Ambition best price five to two, Beacon Edge nine to two. That would make just at this stage now at the odds, that was the one that kind of stood out to me. Um we'll see what happens with declarations, but at this moment I'd be I'd be a Beacon Edge fan. Uh, 
Thomas Coyle, can you win a Drin more in your second chase start? Because that's what the lifetime ambition will be trying to do. Yeah, and look, he, his form is rock solid, obviously, against Beacon Edge and Fury Euro, or what was the third one? Vanillier, sorry, in Down Royal. Um, he's obviously going to be a lot better chaser than Hurdler. He was getting very frustrated there at the time. He's only rated 125. I, I'd imagine he's about 145 if you had something like that now beside him. Um, the only thing with Beacon Edge, I'd say he probably wants it a bit softer, Ronan. is kind of most of his runs. I don't think he's ever even run in good ground. Um, most of his runs are kind of soft ground. Was he, um, sec was he second at entry one year on a decent enough ground? Uh, I just had a flick through him earlier because I was thinking maybe the good ground might might change it, but I looked through it and most of his ground, most of his... The vibes were not suggesting much change at Fairy House. You know, we were talking about Newcastle on Saturday and Bath time. You're not talking that for Fairy House for the weekend. No, no, we're a few showers. The ground's going to be probably a good heel and probably at, at best. Um, no, um, so look... Um, I like I like left, lifetime ambition. Um, Farm rock solid as Vanilla went on and won the grade two, and I was chasing Punchtown last week. Gabby Nacko, he's a good horse. He was a good handicapper. Um, bit he was well fancied for in Cheltenham and in the conditional riders, and you'll see at the first he was a big talking horse for that. Um, a little bit novice at one or two in the inside track in Fairy House, and he used to be a lot bigger and stiffer fences and. He got a little bit keen at one stage and, and he just went to the front and that's when he made a mistake down along the side. So, um, look, he can't afford to do that. Um, it'll be a good race. Although, another one to give a mention to is Grand Paradis. He was he was going to run a nice race in that down oil race when he came down at the second last. He was starting to stay on. Um, so he wouldn't be without a chance in this. But um, this, is, this is a good race. This is a very good race um, if they all stay in it. And... Um, It'll be it'll be a good pointer for later on in the year, but uh, just on form at the minute, I, I go with Jesse's horse and then um, see how he gets on. Let's talk about the next that's on the card, and that is the Portistown Handicap Chase. Of course, a race that had uh, a lot of extra money put into it last year because there was no Irish National, so it almost became an awesome uh, version of the Irish National. And uh, staying is the name of the game, Alpha Desert Bow is in there at the age of 11 as a possibility. But this looks like one for the younger brigade. But I wouldn't have a clue where to start. Just to say, we could have the clash of Forza Milan and Milan native. And do you like Milan, uh, Mr. Groom? Uh, never been, Mike. I'd love to go someday. Uh, I'd love to get back to Italia. Uh, but I do, I do like uh, the Forza Milan, the, the horse hat is uh, in this... Um, yeah, I, I think he, he ran quite well in this race. Was it last year or the year before? Um, he actually, he's, he's got a decent enough record of Fairy House. Um, sorry, I think it was last year. It was 4-2 court made. Um, he's actually nicely enough treated at the weights. In comparison to that run, he's three pounds lower. I thought he ran real eye catcher at Cheltenham. You know, he, he belted one early on. Uh, Maxine Sullivan was riding him there, and that's strictly a dancer race. Um, Belt had won at the sixth, but still managed to, you know, continue on, get back into the race and finish fourth. Um, that was a really big run, and obviously got the course and distance know-how. I, I presume he is going to come here, um, considering he was he ran so well in the race last year. So for me, for as a man to be a big eye catcher, I'd expect him to be close enough to the top of the market when uh, when the betting eventually does come out. Mister Coyle, um, the Port Town was one of the very good races. I, 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 we always had a great half row. We, Eddie actually trained the winner of Forever Gold one at one year, and it was one of the biggest parties we ever had in Barrackstown. It was like it was like coppers on a Saturday night in Barrackstown. There was stools on the roof. <laughs> there was free bars. There was music. There was clothes off. It was great, great. <laughs> um, but uh, it, it, we, we were literally on. Don't put away, I tell you. Um, but a great race. Um, Interesting small field, probably because of good ground. Um, if Coco Beach comes out, I like in um, the one down the bottom, Envoy Purgy. Um, looks and out and out there. Um, could do it coming up to maybe six pounds to get into it an early right. Um, 
I'd imagine someone maybe like Darrow O'Keefe will ride him off nine twelve or something like that. Um, a lot of them are exposed. They are exposed, obviously, because it is Martin trip, and we don't have too many of them in Ireland. Um, the Dabbler um, won the Connacht National as well. He be one. He's a, he's nicely weighted. Um, he could be one with a chance as well. But uh, look, it'll depend on weights and that. Um, you don't really want to be running too far out. But as I'm saying. We don't have these Martin trips too much, and Invoy Pergy for me just looks an out and out stayer, and um, so he'd be one each way in that for me. Anyway, it's a right head scratcher as we come on then to the jewel in the crown, and this is the Bar One Racing Hatton's Grace. Can Her Majesty win it for the third year in a row? And who's going to be brave enough to take her on? And of course, there's a complete. Uh, the, the one that had us all gobsmacked at Punchestown in the shape of classical dream in, but obviously honeysuckle is expected. So let me throw it out to you three and also say, um, because people might look at forecasts or whatever, if she is the good thing, what follows her home? Um, running group. Yeah. Um, it's, it's very hard to get a beat. Um, Mike, um, I appreciate she, probably could have could have just got beaten in this race last season but i don't think that was a race fitness issue i think she that race turned into a right sprint uh two or three from home and um she just showed like she did punches down she just shows that she can win when the chips are down um who's going to take her on here if both the witty horses do take her on classical dream and Saldier, yeah that'll be a test i'm skeptical at this point in time whether classical dream will actually be declared on quick ground first time out but we'll see will he send it like he wants to run him when he did a press call for this meeting three weeks ago uh he, he said he might start him off even if he wasn't 100 percent, he might start him off here uh but then again that wouldn't be great if he wasn't 100 percent taking on a honeysuckle because he'll need to be uh look i think honeysuckle will win no uh prizes or gold medals for that but we're looking for the way the race is going to shape up. And uh, I think if Stormy Ireland runs here, she could be the angle into the race. She should get a get a get her own way in front. Um, and she's a course and distance winner. She won nicely here at the Easter Festival before going on to win her grade one uh, for Willie then at Punchdown. Obviously, if she was with Paul Nichols the season before and came back to Willie's, um, she's just a nice mare. She's a bit bit of a bit of a headstrong kind of mare, it goes off in front, but Maybe she's settling down a bit now that she's seven. And I just saw her as the pace angle here that she could get away in front and maybe Honeysuckle will come and take her, but she could hold on for second or third. So I'll be looking at her maybe in the without market or the each way. She's 20 to one now. Uh, I could see her being a bit shorter than that if she was declared and a few of these came out. And look, you have the likes of Abigadabra's in there having his first run, latest exhibition. Don't really know uh, how he's going to fare back over hurdles. Uh, so there's a few question marks around some of the, some of her kind of rivals for the for the places. So Stormy Ireland made a lot of uh, sense to me from a big price point of view. I suppose Tommy, to some extent, we we could do with doing the total impossible and reading Willie Mullins' mind as to try and work out what he's actually going to run against the mare here. Yeah. Um... It's hard to know, as as Ron was saying, will he will he risk classical dream on good ground? Um, look for me, honeysuckle wins, but I think Abacadabras is the the horse to finish her. Uh, one run over two and a half miles wins the entry hurdle, beats the big talking horse you have over there, Mike Buzz. Um, we've seen what he's done since. Um, I don't think he'd be talked about as much if he was over this side, but um. He is, and Abercadabra's bet him. And I think two and a half mile, flat track, good ground, right down the street. Can't see him beating her, but he'll chase her home, I think. Barry, I take it you're not going to throw a large spanner here and predict defeat for Honeysuckle, eh? I'm not, but but that's the one I had marked down as, as the horse to, to, to potentially um, be a danger here. Uh, is Abercadabra's very interesting uh thomas made a made a point you know he's only run at two and a half miles one good ground um will be a bonus to this horse uh, has won first time up in the past um and i'll never forget being at the royal bond um where jack kennedy is coming there pulling absolute treble um behind then by Allen, and i think he's gonna go and win it and absolutely takes the last out of the ground but um i 
up and trip this horse. It'll be interesting to see where the pace. I mean, if Honeysuckle is going to make it here, um, you obviously have classical dream in here as well. Depends, you know, will he settle? Um, it'll be just interesting. Will she be declared? Um, she likes to, to, to make it. But um, Abacadabra, so I think he is very interesting at Fairy House, um, up in trip. Uh, and you can get 11 to 1 on him. And, you know, if if, if you do get the eight runners um, back in us now with 11 to 1 each way, um, you know, that could be a bit of value. Um, that could be your 30 each way bet. Uh, it'd be interesting to see um, uh, what way it, it, it turns out. But uh, Honeysuckle, you know, she just keeps winning, doesn't she? And this is our hunting ground. But, but last year, I thought of, of all... I suppose the years of all her performances at, at Fairy House. Um, it wasn't her best. So it would be just interesting to see. She is that year older. Um, Abacadabras, the value each way for me. And I'd be hoping he could maybe serve it up to her. Well, all I'd say is um, I reckon Classical Dream wants further. I reckon that that, that was brilliant at Punchestown. But he just rode, him into, rode his rivals into the ground and needed every yard of the three miles. So I reckon that he would be better thinking perhaps of something over Christmas at Leopardstown, but Christmas at Leopardstown seems some way away right now. Okay, before we um, get to uh, Naps and Next Best, anybody got anything else they want to say about Perry House on Sunday? Raise your arm and teacher will come to you. Anybody? I, I just think um, the good handicap, the two mile um, magic tricks, he was touted to win that good handicap in Down Royal. Um, probably just didn't get the run of the race to finish second, but hasn't run since and aimed at another graded handicap. Um, Gordon Elliott, JP McManus, £100,000 pot. Uh, yeah, not much for me, Mike. Uh, just like Max Mayhem uh, could make his debut for Joseph. Interesting there in, on, in the uh, the grade three juvenile hurdle there. That always produces a nice horse. Produces Anna here last year. Uh, I'm not sure if Joseph wants to start him here first time out, but he was a good flat horse. He's been bought by Rob Corse since. And uh, this Max Mayhem is a good handicap at Irish Champions Weekend. Uh, he's be interested and I'll be having a look at him in future targets. But uh, that's it really from from the, or the remainder of the card at, at Ferry House on Sunday. Mike, just want to mention uh, before we, we kind of come on to, to Naps and Next Best, um, I know it's into next week, um, but a horse uh, for Nick Alexander, Donny Boy, um, was absolutely mightily impressive on last start. He's down to go at air in the very first race on Monday. Um, I thought he was very impressive uh, last time. So um, he'd be one. I know it is into next week. Uh, but was was very impressive in a bumper at Kelso. Um, one that went straight into the track with us, Donny Boy. Looking forward to him in a minute. Okay, let's bring this to a triumphant conclusion. Gentlemen, I want three winning naps, three winning next best, and then I can tip you two losers to complete the uh, proceedings. So um, why don't we do this in alphabetical order? Starting with Thomas Core. Um, my nap is my mate Mozzie. Um, I just think the good ground, he he's proven on it, and um, so I think he's um, a good bet there. I know he's short, but I think he'll win. And my next best, um, each way nobody home. Um, Eddie, as I said earlier, targets Fairy House. He likes to have runners. Um, he's a course winner. Um. As I said, Susie Doyle, he's a good lady rider up. So um he's he he'll be a good each way back. He's my next best. And I'll just give a quick mention, um I said it the last time and she was just bet. Um I fry earns tomorrow evening in Dundalk. She was only beaten half a length the last day. Um I think she'll go well again tomorrow. So she'll be a bit of it each way back again tomorrow. I think she's eight ton or no. Let's go to Barry Doyle. Very kindly, Mike Vince. Nap of the weekend. Mighty Potter. Uh, taking on Thomas Coyle. Uh, nap of the weekend. Um, um, and if you're looking for a bit of value, look, do you know what? Split the stakes. Uh, back in Rillo and, and, and the machine. 
Um, I like the two of those in, in a race that I think the two Irish horses uh, take up, um, I suppose, a large uh, percentage of, of, of the market. So, um, that's in Rillo, um, two next bests. Am I allowed to do that? In Rillo and the machine, uh, split the stake. <clears throat> you make the rules. I just I just try and enforce them to the best of my ability. Um, Ronan Group. Yeah, no, I go nap. Um, so Royal in the fight in fifth. Uh, at four to one, I'll fill my boots there. To be honest, against uh, Bock of the Epitant and a four-year-old taking on uh, older horses and first, first the rain season. falling from here. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be taking a lot, of, a lot of rain to get the ground uh, on the soft side up in Newcastle, but we'll see. Um, we'll make a note of that. I'll give the clerk of the course your message. <laughs> We run it on the all weather if it goes soft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and next best will go Fiddler on the Roof in the Lybrooks Trophy. I uh, just think he's, in comparison to the two Irish horses who a lot of scope to progress, I think he's a more solid looking profile from his novice chase campaign last season. And he's going to absolutely devour the three mile two for a long trip at Newbury. So he'll do for me in the Lybrooks World Trophy. And I'll, I suppose I better put mine in because I was allowed Doyle moaning at me all week and I can't take it. The mother-in-law's gone on her holiday, so I mean, I, I thought I was having a bit of peace. Um, uh, brief times, 12.35, Doncaster Saturday. Uh, it's not a very strong race. Looked to be good enough for a hat-trick for Neil Mulholland and James Best. And um, and each way, next best, if it turns up, has Charles Burns laid out light brigade for that handicap hurdle at Ferry House on Sunday. Ran a decent race last time out at Down Royal. Um, and of course, second in the novice handicap hurdle at Punches Town at uh, in April. Answers on a postcard, please. This time next week. Anyway, that's it. Well, can I say and that, Mike? It's been a great pleasure to have the three Thanks. wise men. But you want to have as always, you the last word. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt in full flow. Um, but for the sake of a bit of engagement, I was just thinking this. We we, we started this. Uh, Road to Cheltenham Challenge. I'm taking Mr. Groom on. But for the sake of a bit of engagement, um, Roland, we're going to put this up as, a, a, I suppose, our naps uh, next best every single week. Um, and we'll, we'll have a staking system. So we'll see who does come out on top uh, between now and the end of the season. But encouraging the viewers, Mike Vince, uh, every single week between now and the end of the national season, um, let's, let's get a template together in the comment section uh, and let's let's go on our naps and mess best prices taken um and let's see how it works out let's see who who's the the naps and next best king um for on our thursday shows right until the end of the season i think it's worth Mr. It's in active comments. barry doyle himself i'll tell you I, I got the winner of road to cheltenham a40 nap on which note um, it's time to bring these proceedings to a close for another week. Uh, warm and sincere thanks go to the three wise men and also to Barry Doyle, Ronan Groom and uh, Thomas Coyle who've been putting their considerable reputations, or at least that's what it says here, on the line in the search of winners. And a reminder, of course, that we'll do this again next week. And uh, next week we'll feature some terrific action again A Shishkin Free at Tingle Creek at Sandown. A Beecher chase over the national fences at Liverpool and also the John Durkin. And fascinating to see what might be entered for that, John Durkin. Is it going to be album photo, you wonder? Answers and tips at the same time next week. The producer, editor is Barry Doyle from all of us. And I wish you good watching, good punting and good complimentary email writing to champ.ie <laughs>